I want to start off by, by understanding the big picture here. We mm -hmm. know the opioid crisis is bad. So according to CDC, overdoses from opioids jumped by about 30% from 2016 to 2017. And we know the death toll in 2016 is 64,000 American lives. Mm -hmm. So it was bad, and it, it is getting worse. So first of all, I just want to un get a sentiment about the, uh, of the State Department here. How does State Department view this issue? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question, and we view this issue very personally, as a matter of fact. So you know, we, we throw around these st statistics of 64,000 Americans, but these, these Americans are uh, our, our neighbors, our family members, our brothers and sisters, and it's, it's impacting just about every aspect of society. So, you know, we, we take the President's call, President Trump's call very seriously about this national uh, health emergency, and uh, the State Department has a very, very important role to play. Mm -hmm. uh, an example uh, in our relationship with China is, is one way that we're taking a major role in addressing uh, some of the challenges with the opioid crisis. Mm -hmm. And we know that in on May 29th, a senior level Chinese delegation is beginning. They just finished a tour here to learn about drug prevention and treatment. Tell us a little bit about that yes, that's, tour. Yes, that's right. Uh, well, we've been working with the, the, the China's National Narcotics um, um, Control Commission uh, for several years now. And, and just it's, it's a way of exchanging ideas on how to, to address uh, drug issues on, bo on both our sides. So. Um, China has been very cooperative uh, when it comes to uh, um, working with our, our problem. And it is our problem with, when it comes to the fact that we have 64,000 Americans mm -hmm. um, dying from drug overdoses. Uh, but unfortunately, a lot of that, uh, those overdoses are because of opioids. And, and the mass majority of these op opioid deaths are also a result of this fentanyl being added. And this fentanyl is predominantly coming from China. Mm -hmm. uh, some of it uh, is, is coming from Mexico and other places, but the majority is coming from China. So, and so, so our mm -hmm. cooperation with them is very important. Mm -hmm. You talk about fentanyl, and we yes. know this is a drug that's a hundred times more potent than heroin, and its analogs is even more potent. Someone told me fentanyl is actually a smuggler's dream. It's compact, yeah. it's of high value, it's terrific for smugglers, and it's so bad for law enforcement. So how do you see this drug, and how does the potency of this drug change the whole game? Yeah, here? It's, it's truly a game changer. And, and we've, been, we've been sharing that, that concern at, at the global level. I, I just, it's a smuggler's dream because it can be produced in just such a small amount. As you know, just a few grains is enough to get a significant high or kill someone. So if you can imagine if a kilogram uh, this fentanyl can be pr produce a million pills. Think about the profit there. So um, help me understand here. We know the profit with fentanyl is extremely high. For example, if you buy uh, a kilo of pure fentanyl from China for like four thousand, five thousand mm -hmm. dollars, you turn it into a tablet. It's thirty million. It's going to be a lot of money. Yeah. So why is it only coming from China? Why other countries? Uh, do you see other countries doing this? Well, that's why we're we're send, sending the alarm bells that uh, this can potentially come from other places. Unfortunately, fentanyl, um, just like methamphetamines, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't take a, uh, a significant background in chemistry to actually produce this in someone's basin. You just really have to have basically the recipe and the, the proper ingredients and the proper uh, um, um, equipment and the training and then you can start producing it. So we're really paying close attention to looking at the precursors you know, that make fentanyl and that's why we scheduled those internationally and why we asked China to schedule them this year. We know the majority of illegal fentanyl comes from China through international mail. Um, from your interaction with you know, the chi your Chinese counterpart, how do you feel like it's is China any, any special in treating the international drug chain compared to other countries? Um, well, I think they, they take their um, responsibilities as an international partner seriously. Okay. And, 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 and to their credit, they have been working very closely with us. Yeah. Admitting that this is our, 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 you know, this is our problem, yeah. but the, the, um, they also have a responsibility okay. to get better control of, of uh, the illicit production and distribution if it's coming from them. And so we were really delighted to see that they have been scheduling them, uh, the, 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 the fentanyl and the various classes that can be produced. Mm -hmm. So I take that you think they're very sincere in cooperation. Yeah, I, I, I think so. You know, and, and likewise, just, um, you know, we want to help them with some of their 
issues, which mm -hmm. is why, you know, as you just mentioned at the beginning of this conversation, mm -hmm. uh, a high-level official came over with a team to look at how we deal with uh, drug demand reduction problems, which is uh, the, an, another very important part of our overall drug policy. So some people say this is the new opium war. I don't know if you're familiar with the opium war in China yeah. in 1841, but they're saying this is with reverse rows of victims and victimizers. How do you how do you no, take I, that? I don't. I I disagree with that uh, okay. that statement because um, you know to, to I think to imply that there's no evidence to imply that the government is is behind this. This is these are these are criminals. Um, and we want to we want to go after criminals both our countries, mm -hmm. and, and so we're treating this as a, a, a transnational crime issue versus some sort of national strategy. For as a result of U.S. China cooperation, I'm quoting some uh, statistics here. China has established domestic restriction on the production and sales of 143 substances, yes. including a number of fentanyl-related compounds. Do you feel like China is doing enough? They, that was a very big step for us. And, and like I alluded to earlier, we, we, we see signs that when you do, they do schedule things, then we see the criminals, I can't tell you how, but we can see that the criminals do change and alter their approach. Mm -hmm. They look at it different ways to create another, um, another fentanyl-like substance. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we, we were asking them to kind of just, uh, there's a way if you can schedule these things as a class. In other words, if it's if it has a fentanyl-like uh, uh, effect, then you, it's dangerous and illegal. Yeah, it's going to take some time for the law enforcement to yeah. tackle this problem. Yeah. Are you hopeful that this is going to be? I am. I am because um, uh, you know I, I, I was a little more worried about it maybe two years ago because we were having a conversation internationally. We heard a lot what you're saying now. This is America's problem, um, but we've been been educating a lot of our colleagues internationally. They mm -hmm. basically saying, look at this new business model. Look at this new supply chain. Look how easy it is for these criminals to basically produce this and distribute it. So our narrative has been: if your country has uh, a, a, a drug demand problem, if your country has access to the internet, if your country has access to the mail, then you can have a problem with this. So how long do you think it's going to take to kind of solve this fentanyl problem? Uh, I wish. I'd love to say tomorrow, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think that's uh, realistic. Okay. Um, uh, it, it's, it's probably going to get worse before it gets better, um, mm -hmm. but I think it will get better. We've, we've been through a crisis like this before in our mm -hmm. country. Um, just by the sheer fact that so many people are dying, I think, uh, in our drug demand, our drug prevention, our treatment, and, it, and the word that's getting out, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it'll stop at some point. Okay. But then we've got to be worried about it.